So what is going on everyone, Fernando Silva here with another video and today we're going to be talking about Apple's plan for this new M1 iPad Pro because if you guys saw my initial reaction to that release then you guys know that my thought is that in a vacuum, which means if I bought that iPad Pro today, I do not think it's that big of an upgrade to what the current iPad Pro for 2020 and even the 2018 iPad Pro can already do, right? Because I rocked the 2018 iPad Pro, 256 gigabytes of storage, 4 gigs of RAM and I've never had a performance issue and I've never had to replace it or fix it or anything like that, even three years later. So what I wanna know is what Apple is planning by putting all this intense hardware into these new M1 iPad Pros and see what the future holds. Because right now, that iPad Pro is not really worth it, especially if you have a 2018 or newer iPad Pro, unless Apple does something with the software. And again, I'm a big proponent of never buying something with the promise of it doing something better in the future. You wanna buy it for what it's doing currently. And currently, whatever that new 2021 iPad Pro can do, my 2018 will be able to do the same thing. Probably not as fast, but still fast enough for most people. But let's figure out what Apple's up to right now. So real quick, let's run through this spec sheet, like what Apple upgraded, right? And I'm gonna be talking about the 12.9 inch one because that brings a new mini LED display, the new price jump and all those things. So that's the one that I'm gonna be referring to mostly, not the 11 inch iPad Pro. But for the 2021 iPad Pro, the 12.9 one, we got a new mini LED display. It has 5G. They changed that USB-C port into a Thunderbolt port now, which is amazing for data transfer speeds and external displays. And also now you can use Thunderbolt docks, not just USB-C docks. They added more RAM configurations, more storage configurations, and then lastly, like I mentioned, they added that M1 chip in there. And now let's talk about what this means, because if I compare it, again, in a vacuum today to the baseline MacBook Air, which you can get for $900 through the education store, that M1 MacBook Air has 8 gigs of RAM, the M1 chip, 256 gigabytes of storage, has a built-in keyboard already, and it's pretty much a plug-and-play ready to go, versus with the baseline iPad Pro for the 12.9-inch one, you're now spending $1,100 for 128 gigabytes of storage without the Magic Keyboard and without the Apple Pencil. So right then and there, that is a $200 price difference and you don't even have a keyboard, a mouse, or a pencil to really work with that. So again, it's really hard to make the recommendation, hey, get the new iPad Pro instead of that MacBook Air. So what the plan I think Apple is doing is now with WWDC, I believe it's about 45 days away now at this point, iPadOS 15, should be a game changer, right? It has to do something crazy. Basically what I think is gonna happen is Apple's prepping this new iPad Pro with all the necessary hardware that it needs, all those necessary internals, to now run this new software that they're building. I doubt that they're gonna just slap Mac OS onto the iPad Pro, because it just, it doesn't make sense. It would cannibalize all the MacBook Air sales and things like that, or maybe even the MacBook Pro sales, because people like the versatility of the iPad Pro. But I do think that iPad OS 15 is gonna be an even bigger bridge in bridging that gap between Mac OS and iPad OS, right? I do think we're gonna get pro level apps. I think we're gonna get secondary display support. We're gonna get a different type of multitasking where you can move windows around and resize them. Something a little bit more familiar, more natural to what desktop users and laptop users are accustomed to. Because again, with that M1 chip, it now should be able to run Mac OS, but I don't think Apple's gonna really do that. And maybe it's gonna to get to the point, I saw a tweet that somebody put out where two, three years from now, it's not gonna be Mac OS and iPad OS, it's just gonna be like Apple OS and everything's gonna run the same thing because it's running on one vertical, one same chipset. So I do think that that could be in the future, but I think for right now, Apple's gonna upgrade iPad OS to give us pretty much everything that we ever wanted to make the iPad Pro a computer full replacement instead of an alternative. And you're not gonna need to find out how to get from point A to point B in different ways with the iPad versus the MacBook Air or the MacBook Pro or any other traditional desktop solution. So again, overall, I think it's good, but again, in a vacuum, and that's what I keep telling people. Like, yes, these upgrades are amazing. The mini LED screen is probably gonna be out of this world. I've never used a mini LED screen, and the Liquid Retina on the 2018 is more than enough. The OLED on the iPhone 11 and iPhone 12s are more than enough. So I'm curious to see how much better this screen is gonna be, because mini LED is expensive, and that's probably why we got that price hike at that 1099 mark instead of the 999 mark that we're so used to seeing on the upper end iPad Pro. So I think that's where that cost difference is coming from because that 1099 doesn't even include the 5G. If you want 5G, that's another $200. So to paint you a final picture of what we're looking at here, if you wanna get a fully loaded iPad Pro with two terabytes of storage, 16 gigs of RAM, a Magic Keyboard, an Apple Pencil, you're looking at $2,850 for a iPad or a tablet, right? So at that price point with that much hardware power, I think Apple is now 
finally thinking like, hey, this is gonna have to replace computers. Cause not a lot of people are gonna spend two to $3,000 on a fully loaded iPad Pro to be a secondary or supplemental computer to your current laptop or desktop situation. At that point, people are just gonna get the cheapest iPads and use that as a supplemental device as a second screen or something like that. So if somebody's spending that much money on a computer, then it better be a computer and it better do everything that that person needs to do flawlessly, right? Without any real learning curve or without any real workarounds or anything like that. So that's what I think Apple's master plan is, right? I think they're using this iPad Pro, this hardware release, because again, the form factor is the same. It looks the same as the 2020 iPad Pro. It's gonna be able to use the same accessories as those iPad Pros. So from a form factor, you're not gonna be able to see it's a different computer or a different tablet or a new tablet, right? So I think Apple's gonna really have to push the software optimization and make that software match that hardware upgrade fully. Because if that doesn't happen, then again, we're just gonna have a machine that's so overpowered to run one task at a time, which is how I use it. Like right now is my video editing machine, it's my YouTube machine, it's my photo editing machine, but I do one task at a time on the iPad Pro and it runs it extremely well but I want it to run six, seven things extremely well and be able to customize it however I see fit. So I think that's what's gonna come with iPadOS or iPadOS 15. Hopefully it does release at WWDC, that beta one. And again, I wanna see what that compatibility looks like going down, right? Will the 2018 iPad Pro be able to run the same version of iPadOS 15 as the 2021 iPad Pro? We're gonna see how that kind of trickles down into Apple's ecosystem, into their older devices, but stay tuned, stay subscribed, because we're gonna be testing a lot of that stuff out and see what Apple has planned for not only the, the top end, the newest, latest and greatest, biggest and baddest of that 2021 iPad Pro, all the way down to maybe a 2018 iPad Pro or a 2017 iPad Pro and see kind of what happens with iPad OS 15 and those devices. But, but that's gonna do it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. So let me know in the comments below, do you guys agree with my statement that in a vacuum, this 2021 iPad Pro just isn't worth it quite yet because the software is pretty much still the same. So it's just gonna run all that same software just a little bit faster. Or do you think it's already worth it that those speed upgrades enough that those speed upgrades are enough to justify buying that iPad Pro over your 2018 or your 2020 iPad Pro. Because again, that's my biggest thing. If you have a 2018 or higher, I don't think there's a need for the 2021 iPad Pro, at least not today. If you have a 2017 or older, then maybe, because that'll be a substantial upgrade from both a form factor and a hardware and software perspective, right? So kind of keep that in mind, but leave comments below. Give me your thoughts. I'm always happy to answer and kind of chime in a little bit, but until next time, peace. Check out Paperlike too. Apple, come on. Give me some better software.